Hey, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Max on Color. And um, thank you for joining us, everybody. Hey, Diego, what's up? Hey, Max, how are you? How's it going? Good, man. We are so excited. Uh, well, today we are so excited because one, we're going to talk about the basics. We're going to go back to basics. But then on top of that, we are also very excited because World Cup is going on, right? So German team is playing today. So yes, <laughs> that's that's another story, right, Diego? Yeah, so are you are you watching World Cup as well? Yeah, for sure. I, I love I love soccer, and you know, you are in Germany. I'm in Spain. <laughs> it's football. And they are going to play, <laughs> and they are going to play in I think in two hours. Yes, exactly. While yeah. we're preparing for the the football match. We will try to get back to basics. And hello to Victor in the chat. And thank you for waiting, Victor. And thank you for joining us again today. Um, it's really nice to see you again. Um, yeah, before we start today, um, Diego, um, what do you think about basics? You know, sometimes when we are talking about the basics, we easily <coughs> overlook stuff, right? We, we easily, how do you call it? Um, seduced by you know more complicated more fancy stuff when you know grading and sometimes we overlook the basics that is you know one of them is balancing and i think balancing in itself is a really powerful uh steps that you know perhaps you should not um bypass it and you know jump to you know just color correct and grade your stuff and yeah call it, call it the day right what what yeah. what is your opinion on ba uh, basics in balancing? You know, I actually think that basic, as the name say, is basic. It's something that you need to know. And when I'm when I'm grading with different colors, even with my students, I found that the biggest problem they have is that they don't have clear the basics. Yeah. So they skip it. They skip the basics. And everyone in color grading like to make a look of an image but they forgot the basic thing of creating a look. Yeah. And um, so, this this kind of like reminds me of like the old Kung Fu movies, you know, whenever you saw a master and you said like, oh, make me your student or something like that. They will not like straight away teach you how to do Kung Fu, but you know, they ask you to do like washing the dishes or, you know, polishing the, the, the car, wax on and wax off, stuff like that until you're really good with the basics and moving yes. on. Right. Yeah, and, and actually, you know what I say, I, I always think that do, I mean, do just use one note or two notes and with yeah. the basic tools, make the image beautiful. If you yeah. cannot do it with a basic, I mean, with leaf gum again, with the tools that we're going to see, and then you are like waiting for secondaries, use qualifier, power windows and so on. But I mean, if you try to fix something that you can really do in a basic way using secondaries, that's not the way. That's not yeah. the way. Basic and is the key. Basic is the key. I do agree with you, my friend. And yeah. um, uh, by the way, um, our our team at, at uh, Red Giants started the discussion, started the uh, vote or poll or questions in Twitter or in uh, Facebook as well and in Instagram, asking what is what is the correct way to like most of the people out there, do they uh, balance first and then create look, or do they create look first and then balance? And that's actually what we are going to you know, shine a light. Well, let's talk about the discussions on the second half of this um, episode. What do you think, Diego? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's a great discussion. We always have this discussion. Yeah, and, awesome. And what we're going to notice here, we're going to say that later. But at the end, there is not the correct answer for that. It's like you have to test it. You have Spoiler to test it, alert. We will see. Spoiler yeah. alert. <laughs> we we right. will see. We will see. So before we move on, I think it's better if I share my screen and um, do a little bit of housekeeping, right? For sure. Let's do it. So um, if you um, go to maxon.net, our website, um, <coughs> if you go to the event page that is under news and um, events, or you simply type in maxon.net slash events, you'll, you'll be able to see all the um, webinars that we are hosting this year um why this year because you know we are coming to um the the end of the year already wow this year is so fast 
And um, tomorrow, uh, make sure you join uh, VFX and Chill if, if um, you are into creating cool VFX. And next week on Monday, uh, starting on Monday, there there is a new uh, The Mystifying Post Productions um, webinars focusing on pyro. That's the new stuff, the new f features implemented in the new uh, Cinema 4D. Right. And um, next, if you want to catch up with the with the old sessions of our webinars of Maxon webinars, or if you want to rewatch these sessions, you can go to YouTube and simply search max on training team max on training team sorry <laughs> and uh, you can literally search for all the webinars hosted by uh, max on training team right so um without further ado diego what do you think let's jump into the topic man um all right all right let's, let's talk about balancing topic. yeah yeah and actually i mean so when balancing what you have to think first is like the problem of of like looking or paying attention so much to the eye and you, you don't have to trust the eye that's what i'm trying to say it's like i mean we we see by the eye we trust by the eye but one yeah. thing in color grading that you have to know and it's basic is like don't trust in your eyes so much yeah. the eye will learn for sure but at some point the eye will we, I don't know, we'll cheat us. <laughs> we'll make us something different. So Hang that's on. something. Basically. Hang on, Diego. Let me let me switch to another um, theme, uh, to, to another scene. There All you right. go. Okay. Yeah, you, you mentioning about the eyes. Um, our eyes adapt. Right. So sometimes we're we're you know, it's it's OK balancing with with our eyes, using our eyes to to uh, to create the balance of our image. But then, you know, sometimes um, as you said, our eyes adapt, and that's that's one features of our visions, our human visions, that we have what we call the chromatic adaptations, right? That's the fancy name of you know that your eyes is actually adapting to to the to the lighting conditions, to its environment, to guarantee the 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 uh, how do you call it the the appearance of color in the object, right? Yes, yes. And, and actually, this is something really good, but it's a disadvantage when we're grading. Because when we are grading, I mean, everything what we're going to see is going to be nice. <laughs> At yeah. the end, it's going to adapt. At the end, it's going to adapt. So that's, that's really basic, but you need to understand. Don't throw so much in the eye. And also, for example, here you see me, I'm in a, in a room that is dark. And the reason of that is because I mean, I don't want any color around to change the view that I'm looking at the color. So, for example, you see that I have a neutral gray in my wall. So if I have, for example, blue in the walls, then what I'm going to see in my screen will be no blue because I already have so much blue around. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think I, I, I read a little bit about that. And that's like... Um, uh, we human, we also have like what we call the peripheral visions, right? We have the center visions, the one that we are focusing on, but then we also have like a peripheral visions. Um, sometimes when you are grading and um, when you have like a colorful room, um, while your center visions is, is like locked to your monitors, your peripheral visions, if, if it's like, if your room is like very colorful, this could give some unwanted effect to to the grade because it is affecting your your visions and um like um <clears throat> i actually want to show an example of what a uh, chromatic adaptation is i have a several clips here awesome so um one thing that that um that could like uh how do you call it, represent this like really um, easy is that when you go out in the night and you do like a, some fire, uh, you know, set up some fire and fire, how do you call it, fire place or something? Yeah. Like this. Yeah. Yeah. You set up a fire, sit by the fire and you talk with your friends and, you know, while enjoying some some drinks. Um, normally, after some times, um, your eyes will, will adapt. First, you will see that everything is bright, um, warm, bright, red, or yellow. 
But then after some times, you start to see that the skin tone looks normal. And then after that, the t-shirt or the white t-shirt that your friend is wearing will appear normal, right? That's because our eyes is um, adapting to its environment. And then um, you can also see that a lot in the, in the um, movies, like for example, that, that you see on the screen here. Um, you have a lot of like scenes on with with fire. Normally, it's like uh, how do you call it portrayed like very warm. But then our eyes can still um, adapt and see that yeah, the shadow is, is is black. I can I can really see that the shadow is neutral. The skin tone is 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 um, correct. And yeah, that's that's one um, how do you call it one. Um, features of our of our eyes one uh, one function that our eyes is doing adapting really well using the chromatic um adaptations go on diego yes. i think i talk too much no and actually you know that's that's something you say is really really good for us but it's a disadvantage and that is one of the reasons that for example we talk about the room but also one thing that at some point we need to control is the monitor I yeah. mean, if you have a monitor that is not calibrated, your eye will, I mean, your eye will like what the monitor see, but if it's not calibrated, you will do something wrong. You will make mistakes. And when we are talking of balancing, we are talking to something like, please put the blacks, blacks and the yeah. white whites. That's talking on balancing. Imagine that we are with a camera and we put a white paper in front of the camera and we make white balance. That's balancing, that's balancing. But if your monitor doesn't display the white, it displays, I don't know, a white reddish or a white bluish, at the end, your Y will be different. Yeah. So, so that's important. And also talking about the setup of, for example, for a grading room, or for example, this grading room, it does, in some cases, you have a, a light that we call the bias light. Mm -hmm. So what the bias light is doing is that it's a light around the monitor and this light is giving a temperature of 6,500 Kelvin degrees. Yeah. And the reason of that is because it's white. So this is fighting against the, the adaptation of the eye because yeah. the eye will adapt for the image that you see. But if you have a white around your screen that is always white, your eye will always refresh. Your eye will always refresh. Uh, that's that's a good trick there. Um, yeah, um, where to find this kind of like a bias light, uh, Diego? Do you have any so, recommendations? Yeah, there is a there is a company that is called Media Light. I love it. I love it. The lights over there is like forty dollars, I think so. Yeah, but it's great. I recommend everyone that is grading have a bias light. And um, do you use like a the LED strip in the back yes. of your monitor or the the light bulb? And then you put it no, on. No, I have, the, I have the LED. I have you the have LED. the LED strips, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah, yeah, it, that's good. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you are probably you, you guys are thinking, okay, you are mentioning many problems. Like, okay, first the eye, then the the environment, then the monitor. So, in who we trust? Max, in, exactly. In which one do we trust? Our yes. eyes. Our yes. monitor, or is there some some um, helping hand out there in your software? Do you think so? So, do you want to to spoil the answer, Diego? Yes. So okay, I, I'll, have, I will let me, let me share, share the screen. screen. Exactly, yes, I'll share, share your screen. screen. All right. All right. Do you see my screen now? I can see your screen. I see All Max right, on there. All right, that's perfect. So yeah, so when we're talking about that, like. Okay, in what we trust? We trust in our friendly scopes. The scopes, the one, the tool you see here, are the one we need to trust more in color grading. So a basic, a basic or a mandatory, uh, I don't know, a mandatory way when you are grading is that always use the scopes. Never do anything with it without the scopes. No matter if you have, I don't know, the best monitor or you are an experienced, always use the scopes. The scopes are the ones that are telling you the truth about what is happening. No one 
the, even the monitor can fail the eye, the scopes. I always say that the scopes is like, like I don't know, like a golden retriever dog or something like that. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> yes, but I mean, it's the dog that is that will always follow you, will always take care ah, about you. I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's not a chihuahua, it's a golden retriever. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. a good example there. Yeah, yeah. So talking about that, for example, we have here, and all of you see Maxon, and we have here one scope that we call the waveform. So the waveform is one scope that is showing you luminance against position. So what this means, I have zero here. I have, in this case, a 1023. Zero will be black. 1023 will be white and the reason that you see for example dm is because here is in this part is white and here is a little bit like gray darker yeah darker so this is the reason you see the m here but it's not just luminance it's not just a luminance like instrument it's also showing you the the positions against luminance so this is the reason that we read maxon here and we read it here read it here because every letter has like a gradient that is going from white to gray to darker that is showing me here and also is going from left to right so this is the best i i love this example because it's a great way to read an image it's like luminance and position and for example if i do some changes here look if i pan it okay now even the scopes are panning but if I tilt, nothing will happen in the scopes completely. You see? So it's showing you more horizontal position later than vertical. And the vertical in this case is luminance. And this is the waveform. You can see it also, for example, here. This is a gradient that is going from black to white. And the reason that you see a diagonal line here is because it's going from left to right. And you always find these things. For example, look at here. Here we have a 10 steps. So in the 10 steps, we see black here, white, and we see different shades from the black to the white. And that shapes looks like steps in our waveform. And from left to right. And the waveform is the kind of tool that is always telling you like, okay, look first how the light of the image is, and then you can start like doing some things. So for example, here we, we see some other images in this timeline. And for example, let me show you actually here. And I will put this here. So when we see an, an image like this one, and we say, OK, how can, can we translate this image to the waveform? One way will be like, OK, let's put from left to right. Which one is the darker part? The center. So probably he's here. The, black, the brightest is this part and this part. So these parts are here. So we always do that before like even move a tool. We look at the scopes and we say how many light has the image or how much light has the image. And based on that, we can act. But this, there is also a tip. Right of reading the scopes. Do you rem do you remember the tip, Max? I think I forgot it. All right. Let me <laughs> let me remind you that is at the beginning you will find, for example, in this case, you will find a little bit harder to see an image, to yeah. see an image and to translate the image into this waveform. That I know it looks it looks really technical. It looks really mathematics. And we as an artist, everything that has numbers, we say, no, 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 I don't want that. But I mean, this is this is what you trust. But for example, to read in a good way here and you are still like you are still not used of you are like beginning in the color world. What you can do is you can select the options menu and select something that is saying display qualifier focus. So what the display qualifier focus is doing is that if I select here, Probably you're not seeing really good here in this case. Okay. Okay. I don't know if you see it, but there is a small circle 
in my way for yeah and this circle is moving every time i'm moving around the image so you so can example, so you can kind of like pinpoint which which area that you want to have a read on right yes yes let me actually put it here maybe with colorized you can see it more so yeah look even it has something like I just chose something that I never use, <laughs> but it can help you also to read the scope. That is the colorize, the colorize, because it's showing you by colors, the parts, for example, here is red and it's showing you red. So you can use also this part like for, for, for reading the scopes. Mm. And probably you're asking, Diego, why you never use colorize? What do you think, Max? Well, I think because probably you most of the time use the RGB, um... Uh, mode, right? Kind of. Kind but, of. Okay, but the reason I, I never use colorize is because first, okay, I, I started grading like 10 years ago and we didn't have this option, colorize. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so you're I just mean, reading the luminosity of the image. Yes, but also the, the reason is that when it's colorized, I lose a little bit of resolution mm. in my waveform. So when I lose a little bit of resolution, for example, look at the difference. There is many detail of the waveform that I'm losing it uh, when I'm colorized. That's maybe the most technical reason of not using it. But I, I mean, it's always, always really, really important like to see which part of the image, for example, here, they are here, look. And the brightest part are at the top, this one is on the left. But also, for example, the waveform, it's not just only good for check what the image or how the how you can say how the light is represented in a in a scope. Yeah. The waveform is also a great tool to know what your tools are doing. That's actually a really good are... point. Yeah. yeah. Because when we are balancing, arguably we are using a set of tools that you know um, probably is used um, is like available uh, in any other software um, other than Resolve, right? Um, lift gamma gain, um, exposure, temperature, tint, or something like that. And I think knowing what these tools are actually doing but, um, in, in behind the, how do you call it, the curtain, you probably um, can have like a better knowledge when you have to uh, deal with, a, with another software, but you know, uh, with the same tools. What do you think, Diego? Yeah, and, and you know, I always think that always think on the result before move something yeah because i think I mean, the lift gamma gain they're using exactly the same math behind the tools right yes Everywhere. so for example let me show it to you here i'm going to yeah. make offset and i'm going to put move the offset up and look what the offset is doing is moving all the tonal range of the image it's moving all the tonal range so let me do the same here, for example, in the Maxon, and I will increase it. And look, it's increasing all the light and in all the image, in all the image. So the offset, if we are looking at this and we are looking at this test pattern, so the offset we can say is moving everything. It's moving everything and it's also doing the same in color. If I'm doing here, it's doing the same in color. And in color, we have another, uh, another scope we will see it later but I, what i want you to see is that always try to test your tool before doing something so the offset is moving everything what is doing the game the game is moving the like the highlights and the mids what is doing the lift the lift is doing is moving the blacks but then the, the white point is not is, the white is left point. untouched yes yeah. And also what is doing the gamma. So the gamma is moving the mids, but it's also starting from the mids lower part and yeah. then going to the mids higher part. higher part. So that's in some way, I mean, definitely we will take, you need to take more time experimenting on this and so on. But in this case with the waveform, the waveform is going to show you the light. It's going to show you how the light represents in an image and it's also giving you a correct uh, way to know what the tools are doing. Because in every software, it's going to change. If you use it in Premiere, 
or in best light or in scratch always do this before I start grading always know what the tools are going to do mm. yeah, yeah that's a good tips there yes so and you um, you were yeah go on go on no i i was like thinking okay so what about color <laughs> yeah so we say we say okay balance we can call balance exposure and a way to exposure an image but what about color what do you use for color to, to read the color max well, I normally, in scope's term, when I want to read about color, um, the amount of saturations or the amount of the, the, the balance of the, of the signal of, our, of my image, uh, the scopes that I'm using uh, to judge the, the, the balance of my color uh, is the vector scope. The vector scope, nice. So let me explain you a little bit about the vector scope and what it's doing. Yeah. So for example, here, I move to the vector scope, let me put it big here. And it's doing this beautiful combination of things. And also the vector scope, you know, I always think that the vector scope is like a chromatic wheel, but mm -hmm. uh, not, a, not a fancy chromatic wheel. It will be like a, a chromatic wheel, black and white. <laughs> but the vector scope is showing you saturation and hue. So for example, in this image, if I move to the red, Look, all is moving to the red. All is moving to the, in this case, magenta. In this case, to the blue. And here to the green. So the vector scope is showing you the amount of color and where is the color going. It's perfect to see, in this case, I don't know, when you see a color uh, in one part and you want to check it, you, you, you use the scopes. And also, yeah. for example, in this part, for the people that do television, we are so used to the, in this case, to the pattern that is showing you like different colors, the primaries and the secondaries. And you see a perfect synchronization between the scopes. Look, it's beautiful. It's beautiful what it's doing. It's like the red is going to the red, the magenta, the yellow, the blue, the green, and the cyan. Mm -hmm. and the reason that we do it in television before that we did it, because right now we don't we don't do it so much. But the reason was that we were like showing uh, where our colors of the program were going, and it has to go into that that exactly place. Yeah. Yes. And and I sometimes use waveform to a uh, waveform. Sorry, <laughs> I sometimes you use vector scope to test my tools as well, Diego. Um, should I uh, show you that? For sure. Let me let me see what you have. Yeah, man. So um, let me just expand my uh, vector scope. Switch to vector scope. Right. Um, I normally also uh, use vector scope to test my tools, and in this case, I can I can see like um, like um, using exactly the same method like what Diego used before, right? So um, before um, we we can see that with with a with a waveform, we can see how our gain wheel functions. We can also see how our offset wheels functions. But, but then um, using vector scope or uh, or waveform, I can um, test how my temperature and tint uh, behave um, in this case. So for example, if I am ramping up my temperature, I know that it is moving all the saturations into the orange um, area. But then when I am moving in, into the uh, negative value, it is moving on an axis. So it is moving between the orange and the, the cyan, um, this axis particularly. But then um, also on top of that, um, the tint control, if you play around with the tint control while monitoring your vector scopes, you can see that it is moving the signal to magenta and green axis. So that's another way that you can see um, how your tool behave with vector, sco with vector scope. And what nice thing here, if I'm using waveform, combining it with waveform, combining my, my t test before with the waveform. And if I'm testing my temperature control, I can see that it is moving 
only the top part of my signal. So it, it is like the gain um, wheel behavior in this case. So the nice thing here is that blacks is remain untouched, similar to wheel, uh, tint wheel, uh, tint uh, sliders. Now, if, if I am, I know that there are some locations where you can see like a temperature and tint controls as well. Th and that's probably in the HDR wheel, right? And I can also try to test that using the same method. Like for example, if I'm ramping up my, my temperature and my tint, I can really see that it is moving in, in a similar fashions, but then there is a toe in the, in the, in the bottom part of the, of the image of the curve in the bottom part of the signal. So there's like a, a slight toe in the, in the blacks and similar with the tint. So yeah, that's a, that's how you kind of like a play around with your tools to test what it's actually um, doing behind the, behind the curtain. So just like that. Right, Diego. Yes, and, and I mean, it's like, it's perfect for balancing. So let me actually show it to you mm -hmm. how to balance some images using uh, the scope, some the vector scope. Yeah, so let, for me, example, let me share your screen. Yeah, there you go. So for example, here, what you see is a shot that looks really, really magenta, looks really magenta. Even the vector scope is giving you some colors. And the vector scope is at some point is showing you all the tonal range. So what this means that if I move it, look, I'm moving all what is happening. And one way to balance in using a vector scope is to move the colors to the middle. So what we can say is like, okay, I want to move all of these colors that you see it here, but to the middle. So what I can do is come here and move all to the middle. But what you're going to notice is that it's not balancing correctly because when I move everything to the middle, I mean this part, then the green goes up, goes to the other part. So one tip that is really, really interesting to balance with the scopes, it will be like to put four scopes and in the four scopes, for example, here, four vector scopes. And in this case, each vector scopes will be for the shadow, for the midtone, for the highlight and for all. I go to the options and I select color, low, even probably you'll say, Diego, why you don't like colorize? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in the vector scope, probably will be interesting to have it. But here I'm going to, the, to put all of them. This is shadow, as you notice here. This is the midtones and this is the highlights. And what I can do is like, okay, which one is more far away from the center? The shadow, a little bit, but not so much. The mid-tone, yeah, the mid-tone are, are kind of far away. But look at the highlights. So the highlights are far away. So what I can do is come here and put this to the center. Mm. And look, it's getting better. Look, now the mid-tone, the mid-tones, like the, the mids are close, but are a little bit red. So what I can do is come here and put it here. And what about the blacks? The blacks are good. The blacks are good, the whites. So look, based on that and following my, you know, at this point, my vector scope, what I had was, this was before, and now it's like that. That's a really nice and quick way to balance it, right, Diego? Yes, it's a quick way, and it's the way, for example, in most cases with balance, with a color panel. Because with a color panel, what you mm -hmm. have is the color wheel in like in the three parts, and yes. you move the, the highlight using this one, then the mids here, and then the shadows here. So it's a really good way and a quick way to balance an image. You can actually feel your adjustment, right? Yes, yes, but I mean, it's... Vectorscope is nice, but I also think it's, it's even better for, for example, for, I don't know, for check a, a predominancy of mm -hmm. a look or for C or for match looks. It's really nice. Yeah. But, you know, one of the things that I found in Vectorscope is that, okay, it's good, 
but it's not perfect. Yeah. Do you use any other scope for balancing an image, Max? Yeah, I normally uh, compare uh, pair them either waveform, vector scope, or RGB parade. Um, let me show you that, Diego. Yes, let me see what is the RGB parade. So um, we're back here. Um, there are like plenty ways in, in balancing, in my opinion. There are like, um, you know, like the easiest method for me. Um, um, well, I think it's a little bit um, opposite to your um, um, opinion before. Sometimes, you know, I can also balance without using the, the scopes. Oh, that may sound like really radical at the moment, right? So um, here in, in this image, I have like a... Um, I have a adjustment right at the end that uh, to how do you call it to normalize my image to make it fit to the display space and in this case I'm using the color space transformation from red white gamut red lock 3G10 to rec 709 right just like that but then um, I want to balance before my transformations and when I'm balancing one of the method like the very simplest method that I normally use without like relying too much on the um, scope sometimes is by using the picker the qualifier here and then showing the picker rgb value and then by doing that i can try to find like a neutral area in this case i have like a neutral white shirt and i can have a reading using the value in my picker um how do you call it picker qualifier um exactly um, yeah how do you call it tools and in this case we see that our blue is way much up compared to uh green and red so it's 216 214 and 221 and then by just using my primary wheels i can try to reduce my blue maybe one stop just like that and then have another reading and there you go it's a little bit closer and if you see if we go to the display qualifier focus like what diego mentioned before the one on the top is kind of like aligned already you can you, you get kind of like already something neutral ish white ish in this case um i know that the red is a little bit up and um you can still do that perhaps by reducing the red a little bit more or something like that that's a that's a that's another method that i normally use and what happened if we don't have like a white shirt in our image um like like in this case we have like uh outdoor um clip and although if i see that this boy is wearing like a white jacket um but then I'm not quite really sure if, if that jacket is like really white. What I can do is that I can try to find the opposite of white, that is blacks. And um, here in this clip, at first I thought that the trouser of the boy here is, is black. But then um, as the camera moves, you see that it's like a navy blue or, or dark blue. So we're, we're kind of like out of luck. But then um, as I, how do you call it, uh, scrub forward, there you go. We ha we are in luck. We have a black dog here, <laughs> so I, we can like kind of use that to to gauge our um, balance, uh, to to try to balance our image. So let's let's have a measurement. And here, you can really see that the dog um, have like a the blue channel is a, is a little bit up, is is um, is higher uh, compared to the red and green channel in the in the blacks area. So we can try to um, alleviate that by same like before. I can use the offset control, just teeny tiny, a little bit, and now it's like zero four, zero four, and zero four, just like that. And it, this is before, and this is after. And as you can see, um, right in the bottom of our scopes, we can we have some like a um, neutral um, area already. So that's a one thing. And um, another thing um, is simply by using the temperature and tint control like before. Um, we know that temperature and tint control 
uh, just affect the the highlights and it doesn't um, affect the the lower part of an area so in, in this case we we already see that um, you know uh, we, we we can see that the blacks is like uh, quite like aligned but then um, the highlights is all over the place what we can do is probably just reduce the temperature a little bit until we got some like nice alignment in our scopes or until you know we see like a, uh, a nice measurement again let me show the rgb picker value again like 184 187 and 177 i mean we can try to tweak it further using the offset uh, uh points here but then you know it's it's a i think it's better starting place than this one before and, right? and you know what what you are doing in balancing probably you say okay i will leave it all yellow as the original shot looks mm. but when you balance it's like you recover a lot of depth yes. a lot of depth in the image so look at look at like, the difference it's like, this is before it feels like almost uh, monotonous like analogous yeah. and then yeah, yeah, yeah. now you can really see like there is depth in the image right yes yeah. and um the second thing is like uh, when you have like a image like this i mean you already know that the room is red and and um it is like a rgb light and then how how, how do you balance it <coughs> well sometimes if measuring is not enough you can you know you can pair your balancing with power windows so for example you can try to find like a neutral area here in this case, his jacket is like pretty convincing that it is black leather jacket. And if I draw a uh, polygonal um, or curve um, window and I press my highlight, it will be shown in my um, waveform that my left channel, uh, my red channel is a little bit up compared to the red, compared to the blue. So what I can do is that I can reduce my red a little bit and lift my blue just slightly. And um, if we go back and if we deactivate the power window, it goes from there to there. Just a really teeny tiny a little bit. And you can kind of see that the blacks is a little bit more neutral than before. Of course. And what it's doing is like it's cleaning reduce. the image. It's cleaning the image. Yes. It's, that, is, exactly. that is something really interesting. Yeah. For example, in, in some cases, for example, in this shot, probably they will say to you, okay, let's, I don't know, the skin looks really red. Mm -hmm. Can we take it out? Yeah, we can take it out. But if you have different light temperatures in your scene, it will be a problem. In this yeah. case, you can. You can. But if you have, like, I don't know, like blue, or for example, think on a video clip. Video clips right now are col or really colorful. Yeah. So if one part is red and the other part is, I don't know, blue, and all of them are in the face, and you try at some point like to balance, you cannot do it. You cannot do it because you will have like two different temperatures. And in that point, at that point, you say, no, I mean, I cannot recover what the original color was. Exactly. And I think um, the the key to color balance, uh, the ba balancing itself, is like sometimes you need to to understand so what what balancing uh, really is. I mean, for me personally, um, I, I take balancing as a as a establishment of a good relationship, of a pleasant relationship between the red, green, and blue um, signals in my image. Uh, sometimes it doesn't have to be like technically correct. As long as uh, you got your memory colors um, correct, because I think memory colors <clears throat> has like the most important um, how do you call it uh, effect to our visions. What do you think, Diego? Yes, I and mean, I mean it's like trust trust in the memory colors because that's what the people are going to 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 see when they are watching something. How how would you and... define memory color, Diego? <laughs> Memory color is the color of your memory. <laughs> yeah, color that we that we you know viscerally accept. Like it's it has like a really um, how do you call it tight bond to to us. We remember it um, by by heart. So we know that sky is blue, grass is green, and skin tone and is skin looking tones. like that. 
So yeah, that's really powerful. Yeah, the skin tone is really important. The skin tone is really important. So pay a lot of attention in the skins. Yeah. Skins are one of the most important part on grading. And we don't like when a skin looks, I don't know, red or blue or because that will mean that a person is sick or something yeah. like that. Like in this case, we have like a very bluish um, color tinge. But as long as we, if we can get like uh, the skin tone a little bit to more neutral place, probably something like that. I mean, we can of course massage the image, massage the balance, get like established balance, but uh, how do you call it? Um, more balanced image than this. But then compared to this, I think this is a really a good starting point already. Yes. Yes, it's a good starting point. And what he's doing is cleaning the image. He's cleaning mm -hmm. the image. You know, I, I always think that at the beginning when we are creating looks, what we do more than creating a look, we put a filter in our yeah. image. And that's the main problem. The most beautiful thing of a look is the separation between the different lights. So when you create a look, don't put a filter in the image. Now you are already talking about looks and looks and looks. You know what, Diego? Um, the Red Giant team started the discussions in Twitter um, about exactly that. Um, they're asking, which is correct, when you are color grading, do you get the balance first and apply the look? Or do you get the overall look done and balance with the look in it? Right. Are you are you curious about the, the answer in the, in the internet? So uh I'm flames really yeah flame saying like yes correct first and then great that's really nice and um g2 is an, uh, answering this is the way yeah that's the way balance first and then personally i prefer to sleeping on my project i was initially <laughs> happy with it. yeah that's that's also acceptable i also do that <laughs> balance great sleep delete great and start over <laughs> that's nice i like Why that not? yeah there yeah, is no yeah, yeah. right or wrong balance is as much as part of the look as anything so once the look is set i might as well grade directly towards it in reality and it's still so balancing under the look yeah why not and actually we uh diego and i will, will show you um each different approach to uh, balancing Everyone says yeah. balance and color correct first. To me, that just add more time to work. I usually go with my ass and skip that step. Okay, Humberto, let's see about that. Um, correct and balance, then grade. Okay. All right. Aces from the get go, the rest is the rest. Nice. This is the way. <laughs> right. right. Um, that's also one important part color management. We'll, we'll talk about that. Um, at the same time, well, I don't have any workflow for color grading. My thing is editing. Okay. Well, yeah, it's, I think it's pretty much split 50, 50. Some people like to, uh, to balance first. And then some people like to, uh, to balance under the, the look. So Diego, do you want to show, uh, balance yes. the first approach to balance first and then, uh, creating the look after that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Let me so share your screen. I'm... All right, perfect. All right. So we were, were talking about scopes, uh, vector scopes, and then Max showed you like the waveform, and he was putting here RGB, and doing that, what he he was doing, like he was mixing R, uh, red, green, and blue in one scopes. And the key was to have almost everything white to balance an image. But if you if you feel overwhelmed with this image that looks so many with so many colors and so on, a good way is to use I will say the Swiss Army of the scopes. That is the parade. Yeah. So the parade is 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 this thing that is the waveform, but with colors, red, green, and blue. So for example, look. This is Maxon, and I have because it's white. It's all in the in the same colors, red, green, and blue. But if I move it and I put Maxon in red, now it will have the red channel activated, then Maxon in green, and then Maxon in blue. So the waveform is, I mean, the the sorry, the RGB parade 
it's a great way to balance an image. And for example, in this case, what it's showing you like, okay, you can use the, the for example, the color picker to see the percentages. But what you can do also is what is saying to you, what Max was saying is like, okay, let's actually create here, let's put, uh, I don't know, here uh, a square and just see the white. And in this point, what you need to do is align all of these three. One good tip is let's do this actually with the bars because the bars is RGB. So the RGB parade, so they both talk the same language. And it's always, I mean, it's recommendable to have luminous mixer to zero. And the reason is because when you have the luminous mixer to 100 and you move one to another, what Resolve is doing is try to compensate the, the change of luminance when you're moving a color. But if you have it in zero, what you can do is you can start moving them freely, freely. So for example, I can move this one here and I can move this one here, align them a little bit. And you can see that is, if I put here the picker, that you see is almost, almost white. And then what I can do is disable and look, I balance the image really, really, really fast. So the RGB parade, I say it, it's like the Swiss army is a great tool. It's a great tool. I love it. But be careful because if you try to balance an image, for example, with the RGB parade and you start like, I don't know, let's put everything, let's call all the, all the three uh, waveforms in one point, what you are going to do is you are going to destroy the natural intention of the image. Look, a sunset is like this. Yes, for sure, you can balance it, but maybe more the meats, but maybe more the, the blacks, but don't try to balance the sky because then you will destroy it. For example, if I want to balance this one, probably I will put a little bit less of here, a little bit less this part. I'm doing this, I'm balancing, but I'm not destroying the sunset. You're I'm not going destroying the... the relationship between the red, green, and blue, right, Diego? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's really, really, really important. Also here, the sunset, the skies happen the same problem. But now, going to the point, it's like, okay, do we balance first or do or we make a, a look? look? Yeah. All right, so let me actually do something here. Let me reset these notes. Okay. So if I put a color space transformation, this will be like the original intention of the shot. Something really blue. And you say, okay, let's start like, I don't know, like improving or creating the look and so on. But I don't know, always will be so blue. And if I try to balance it, look, if I try to, try to take out part of the of the blue and then add a little bit of red, it will be hard. It will be hard. So when I have, for example, this look, what I like is to save it. Okay, this is a final, but I see the image really, really contaminated, really. So in this case, what I like is to start in something like really, really flat. I even put it more flat like this, really flat. And then I balance the image let me put luminous mixer to zero. I balance the image here a little bit like that, and then maybe more here. So now it looks a little bit balanced now. And then I add another node. And for example, in this one, I create like I make the the contrast hard, and then then I make the pivot. And look how well balanced is it. And then what I do is I create here, for example, the look. And I look at my reference. This was the reference. Okay, maybe I have to put a little bit more of light here. Increase a little bit. But now I have something really neutral. So when I have something really neutral, I see a lot of depth. And then in the look, for example, I can come here and I can say, okay, let's put maybe more blue. But nothing so electric or nothing so much electric as this one. 
look, this is almost like artificial. Now I have an image that it has more like more separation and the look is cleaner than here. So going back to the discussion, in my case, Diego likes to balance first and then creating the look, even if it's something with a strong look in photography that is like this one. Nice. What do you think, Max? Um, yeah, I, I think I have to represent the other um, camp in this case. Um, um, I think there's also a way for you people out there to uh, create look first and then balance it under the look. So let me steal your screen, Diego. Yeah, for sure. Let me see it. Um, Diego already uh, mentioned before, like a really great example that sometimes uh, there there are some things in 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 our project that doesn't really want to you know you cannot like overbalance it things like sunset and things like um, you know fire or something like that the relationship between the red green and blue will will not be neutral and if you try to neutral neutralize things and if you get like get a exact neutrals red green and blue in your image what you get is actually a monochromatic image and you don't want that right so um what i want to um show you here is another method of uh balancing but then you know you do that after you create the look and by by balancing after the uh, balancing under the look it doesn't mean that the balance will happen after the transformations to the uh, display space for example because all the all the tools all the tools that we uh, tried before will behave differently than you know before the display transformations so for example here my 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 gain will behave like that compared to here i mean i i mean i have m way much more um fidelity to to do the adjustment before the transformations to the display space and um there are some criteria though um in my humble opinion to do a balancing under the look well like anything in post productions um color grading and balancing included uh, will need some experiment for you to 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 get it right what method works for you um, may not works for somebody else's right and um, in my opinion the best uh, the best uh, the, the one one important rule to do the look and then create the balance is to work with the color management because you want the uh, math to transform from what your camera see on the scene to what your display can reproduce and in this case uh, you can use either um, DaVinci color uh, management RCM or you can also use stuff like ACES um, let's see into this uh, f five different clips that I have on my timeline I group them so I have like four different uh, groups and um, in the first in the pre clip I transformed them from Ari Loxy to Da Vinci White Gamut. And at the end, my very end node is transforming from Da Vinci White Gamut to Rec 709, right? And below that, I have my look. So, um, for example, here, I already have some adjustment. Let me just uh, reset that, uh, reset this as well. Sorry to have you uh, watch for this, Diego. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. Uh, I was doing the same. I was doing the same. <laughs> right. So, um, and here at the end, I already, I already uh, create one look that will look something like that to my image. And this look is like uh, pretty much very simple. Um, again, when you want to balance under under your look. I think it's really nice if you can create a look that is not um, particularly targeting a specific area. So no qualifiers, 
no secondaries or something like that. I want my look to, to, to address all the area of my image. So in this case, I'm just using my primary curves, my curves to create my look. And uh, the look that I'm creating today is um, simply by just increasing the saturations and contrast by moving from an RGB color model into the LAB color model. So in LA LAB, um, in uh, you, you will have three color channels instead of um, RGB. It is now the L, which stands for luminance. The A, that that is a the, that is a color up. How do you call it? Plain that move from magenta to green, and then the B is the opposite. Um, how do you call it? The the blue to uh, yellow. So it it works in the in the opposite uh, model. So if let me just reset this and create it from scratch. So I I dedicated like three different um, node. Um, ah, sorry. This supposed to be in morph into parallel. Yeah, I want to show you this. Let's just decompose it. <laughs> decompose that, that, it. Yes. Now, now it's a spider web. Now it's spider web. So in the L channel, I want to right click and then move the color space into LAB. And here, I want to activate only the channel one. So I deactivate channel two and channel three. And in the A, I will also move to LAB, but I will deactivate channel one and channel three. So the only active channel is actually on the channel two. That stands for the A. Did I lock it? Yeah. Yeah. So B, same like before, LAB, but only channel three. So in this case, if I'm going to the L channel, what I do in the in, in my in my curve will just will just affect the the luminosity of the image, right? The the luminance. So in in the A channel, if I increase my curve towards positive uh, value, it will introduce some red. And if I move my curve to the negative directions, it will introduce some green. So I will just increase the red on the highlights and increase the green in the shadow same like the a channel in the v i will increase some yellow on the highlight and some blue in the shadow so by doing that i kind of already have like a general look that affects everything um, there is no uh, keying there is no um, windows whatsoever so it's just one general look for the others of course I can tweak that further, but I think I'm happy with this. Um, I can also um, do it another way by morphing it into layer mixer node and use um, soft light mode. But in this case, I feel like this is way too much. So I can also just deactivate the L channel overall. So now if we go back to like other clips, we see that they're all like sharing um, same look look already yeah. right and then what i can do is that i can start to adjust first the exposure of each individual clip so for example here let's just bump the exposure just a little bit and then next here as well it needs some exposure adjustment here just like that teeny tiny exposure adjustment and then after that I will move to uh, to the amount of the contrast level in my image. So in this case, probably reduce the contrast a little bit. And since I am in DaVinci white gamut, I know that the, how do you call it? The, <laughs> the what? The midpoint of, right. of uh, the mid gray point of DaVinci white gamut Da Vinci Intermediate is 0 0.3, 0 0.36, right? So I can just actually type in why it's not. Let, let's do it like that right. manually. Yeah. Okay, let's just reduce the contrast a little bit. Something like this. And 
probably just let apply like to every single thing and here probably a little bit less contrast things like this and now come the interesting thing the balance so like I said before um, balancing uh, for me is like creating a pleasing uh, relationship with the red green and blue uh, signal of our of my image in this case you can use any any other tools that we uh, discuss earlier but my default is always to like defaulting on the offset wheel because <coughs> it's like targeting everything in the image and um, I can really see that you know um, I can start to balance by um, balancing the 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 blacks level of my image because I see that skin is fine but somehow it feels like it's a little bit too bluish and um, if we measure the the pants the black pants here we can really see that you know there's a slight bump in the in the blue and I can just like reduce it a little bit and same here or I can just ripple to selected clips and by doing so I can get like my you know balance pretty soon and pretty pretty fast um, you know that's for me is, is balancing under under the look and this is especially um, how do you call it especially you, you can do it if you work closely with a with a cinematographer for example you create the LUT since the beginning and then they use the LUT in the, the same LUT in the camera the VFX people using the, the same LUT in the camera and then after that you're using it in your grading I think you can still do that I mean of course you can still disable the look and balance it and look at you know compare uh, which one is um, working for you so I think the answer to that discussions it really depends <laughs> and actually I want to say that for example I mean the in this case Max you have the look at the end of your yes. node 3 and this is it's giving good results because it's at the end. If the look was at the beginning, sorry, Diego. Um, if if sorry, no worry. Sorry, yes. If the look yes. in the beginning, if the look is at the beginning and then you try to match with the look already like born in the image, yeah. the results will be different. Yes, and that way you can break the image. Exactly. So here, this is the reason that Max was having the exposure control balance before the look. But exactly. he was balancing and he was doing based on a look, but the look was after. So like what we showed you before. So if I delete everything and here, let's just use like a very simple LUT. This is from red. Where is red? Here, red. So um, in, in, in balancing under the look, I never want to create the balance after the transformations of my image it means like after the image is transformed to the display space i will leave it alone i will never do the balance there everything that i do will be before the transformations of my image including the the exposure the contrast and the balance yeah yeah, yeah, and the way is, is because, I mean, we were talking at the beginning about maths, about the scopes and so on, and in grading, we, I mean, we don't need to be experts in maths, but we just need to yes. understand that after a lot, the color gamut and the, the dynamic range will be reduced. Exactly. So that way you will have less information to balance than before the lot. So that's, that's the key. They actually, and going back to the basics, the node order is really, really, really important. The node really processing important. order. Yes. I think yes. we can save that yes. for future episode, Diego. What do you think? I love that. I love that. I love that. You know, and actually I found many, many mistakes on that. Many so, mistakes. Yeah. Let, let us know, guys. Write us an email if you want to see the 
the note order in the discussions. It's maxoncolor at maxon.net. Let us know if that would be an interesting topic for you. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Note all. yeah. The nice. note processing order. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, th I think we kind of like sum up that um, discussions. It, I think the answer is like really depends on your uh, project. It may vary under each different type of project. But I think what Diego and me shares in comments is that we will never try to do corrections or balancing after the image transformations when it is already in the display space because of the fact that as that the 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 dynamic range of the image the information of the image is reduced to the information is what your display can fully reproduce right diego That's sorry perfect. to complicate that even further <laughs> yeah 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 right um I think we reach an end. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for joining us today. Um, Diego, I'm, I really have fun talking about the basics today. And I think, you know, let's see uh, what the, the, the audience um, comment on us. Maybe they want to see the note processing order. And maybe we can uh, do some of that in the future, right? Um, before we uh, part ways and watch the football match, <laughs> well, let me just remind you um, that uh, you can visit maxon.net slash events to see the events that is hosted at Maxon, um, hosted on Maxon training team channel. So tomorrow there will be Fair Second Chill and starting on Monday, there will be a new Demystifying Post-Productions webinar series on Pyro. And if you want to watch the recording of this sessions, go to YouTube and type in Maxon Training Team. It will be there. So, so Diego, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you so much, uh, people in the internet, for joining us today. I hope you yes. learned something. And like I mentioned before, if anytime you have questions, reach out to us. We are at MaxonColor at Maxon.net. We'll be happy to hear from you. And um, we wish you a... Yeah, how do you call it? A happy football match. Happy watching a foot, football yeah. match. Let's go with Spain. Right after this. Let's go with Spain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, um, All right. Thanks, Max. Ha have a nice, Thanks. have a nice week, and um, see you in two weeks' time. Take care, Ciao. everybody. Bye bye. Ciao.